My name is Jason Record, and I'm with SUSE Technical Support. Uh, we'll be discussing how to analyze a kernel core dump. When, when the system crashes and generates a VM core or kernel core dump, those core dump files can often be very, can often be very big. And from a support standpoint, and even an engineering standpoint, we can often understand what the issue is simply from an analysis of the core file itself without having to upload the core file. So when you have a core dump and it needs to be analyzed, uh, the first steps that we take are to get an analysis and then a support config. And then we submit that information to engineering who then look it over and then they will let us know if they want the actual VM core file itself. So we're gonna go through the steps on how to analyze a kernel core dump file. Now, the first thing we want to do is um, look at some of the configurations for kdump, which is what will generate the kernel core file. Now, just for a distinction, we're not talking about applications that are crashing. We're talking about the OS itself that's crashing. So let's take a look. I'm going to use said here to search for all comments and delete them, and then search for blank lines and delete those in the Etsy sysconfig kdump file. So here's the, um, the configuration for kdump, and you'll notice that it is configured to dump all of its core dumps to slash var slash crash. So if we change to var crash, we'll notice that there are two core dumps in this, on this server. So this system is dumped core twice. The way we create an analysis, analyze the core dumps, and if we, let's go to the, the newest one, we'll show how to analyze them. Um, notice there's the VM core file. In this case, it had very little memory. So that VM core file is quite small, but on normal production systems with plenty of RAM, it'll be quite big. And the first thing we can do is look at the readme file. This tells us that the time of the crash, the particular version of the kernel that was running at the time of the crash, the host name, and some configuration uh, of the dump level and format that VM core is going to be, how VM core was created. Now, the tool that we use to analyze uh, a kernel core dump is analyze VM core. And the analyze VM core comes in the support utils package along with support config and get app core and check bin. And so we're going to look at the, uh, we're going to run analyze VM core. It must be run as root. And we just run the command. Now, Analyze VM core has two dependencies that do not ship with um, SLES by default, and that's crash and the debug info kernel needed to map out the core file for analysis sake. So we need to install um, crash. Now we need to find out where we're gonna where crash is. That happens to be in the crash package. So if we do a search for crash, it has to refresh all of the uh, repository caches and then it will start searching for that package. And this is what the steps you'll need to take. Now, you'll notice that we did find um, crash, and we found it in the uh, SLE module dev tools package. And if we do a list repositories and grep for dev tools, we'll see that this has already been installed. Now, if this repository had not been installed, then you could run the SUSE connect command to find out 
the repositories. And so if it hadn't been installed, we would say yes to this question to search packages and it would tell us that's in the dev tools. In fact, let's repeat that command. And we're going to say yes. And so here you see that it found crash in the development tools. And here is the command that it gives the command on how to activate the development tools uh, repository. And so you would simply copy that command, run it uh, with sudo, and it would install and register the development tools package. At that point, you could install crash. Since we have it already there, We will install crash. Well, if I spelled crash right, there we go. Okay, once installed both packages, we just accept yes, and let it install the packages. This happens pretty quickly. Okay, now once crash is installed, we could run analyze VM core again, and it will tell us that it found two um, core dumps that need to be analyzed. However, the VM Linux debug has failed its check. And so it's telling us we need, we're missing this debug info package that needs to be installed. And it's giving us an example here. And this is a suggestion. This command itself won't work by itself because the version string is too short. We're missing some of the other elements than of the version string like it gives up here. So what we would need if we run rename dash R, we would need um, the 59.19 version of that debug info kernel. Now here again, we can do a search. This is where it gets a little bit tricky. We'll do a search for kernel default debug info. It didn't find it there and we say yes yeah, search all packages and it didn't find it either. So this is where it's kind of tricky. Just remember that any package that you need to have the debug info for it's going to be in the same repository as the original package but you add debug info onto the package name and the repository. Since we're looking for the debug info for the kernel default package, um, we can, the little trick is to do zipper info on kernel default. This tells us the kernel default is in the SLE module base system 15 SP3 updates channel. So if we do a list of repositories and grep for base system, you'll see that we do have these debug info repositories. The debug info pool is basically an online version of an installation media. And the debug info updates is the latest updates, all of the latest updates that have been applied. Since the kernel we've got installed is a patched kernel, it's not the base install, all we need to do is to activate or enable the debug info updates. And so the way we do that, we modify the repository, we use enable, and then we just need the, we just need this debug info update. So we'll copy that. We want to enable that repository. Now that it's enabled, now if we do a search, it's going to copy, it's going to update the metadata from those debug info updates. Okay, now it's found them. And we want this 19 version, which is the latest version. So we don't need to go any further. We're ready to install um, that debug kernel. Since it's, now if I wanted to install a specific version, let's say I needed to install this kernel default debug info, but the, um, this 5910, you would need to do zipper install, you need to specify the entire uh, version string.
And then you would also have to include the architecture. Um, that would install that specific package. Since we want the latest, we don't need to put any version information in. We will just install the debug kernel. And we will say yes. Now we're going to go ahead and let this install. Uh, this install on my machine takes approximately four minutes. So we'll go ahead and fast forward um, the install. Okay, the installation is completed. Now we're ready to run the Analyze VM. So remember, Analyze VM Core has two dependencies that are not met by default. That's the crash application and the debug kernel necessary for the kernels that have dumped core. Now we see that it's able to, it's passed all of its validation and Analyze VM Core is running properly. And we just, it takes a look at the VM Core determines which version of the kernel it is, make sure it has the, the debug kernel version, and then it goes ahead and uses crash and other commands to help analyze uh, issues in, this, in the particular VM core file for this particular one. And any of the, any of the uh, kernel core dumps that are in the var crash directory, they will all be analyzed. And you'll notice here we're analyzing one of two. It doesn't take too long. So once these uh, get analyzed, it creates a text file in the var log directory that will show us the location that is the analysis report. Once those are generated, if you run a support config after you run analyze VM core, then support config will pick up all the analyze VM core text files and include them in the crash.txt file within the support config. And so we'll have that information available when you open up the case. So if you have a, a core dump that needs to be analyzed, you're going to run an analyze VM core first, then you're going to run support config and upload that to the case. Then you're going to, I'll show you how we're in a, just a second, we're going to show you how to uh, package up the core file and submit it to the um, SUSE FTP server uh, when it's requested. But just hang on to it until it's requested by either SUSE technical support or the engineering team from SUSE. You'll notice here this completed and it shows us the location of the analysis file. So the naming convention is SCC for SUSE Customer Center, Analyze VM Core, and then the directory name that was in VAR crash. And then there will have some good detailed information. Uh, about this cordon. And when uh, the escalation team, my team, gets these the analysis file, then we will open up a bug with engineering and include the support config and the analysis files with them so that they can review it. And oftentimes they can determine the issue based off the analysis alone. Okay, so the analysis is complete and we see that in bar log we have both analysis files. And you can see them here. Then, so now we will just, I'll show you. And in this case, I'm just going to do a I'm running a support config and I'm going to gather minimal information this time. If you were going to submit this to um, SUSE technical support, you would run you would run this a command similar to this. So the dash u says to upload the support config and to include the case number of one, two, three, four, five, six. But in in this case, I just want to see the information on the server and not upload it yet. So I'm just going to do run a support config 
And I'm going to run a minimal support config. I'm not going to get a whole bunch of information, but I do want to include the crash data. And then I'm going to specify a temporary directory where I want that to be. And this is in var log. So it shows me where the support config is going to be. And the dash t creates a temporary directory and does not compress the file. It leaves it extracted so that we can go in and take a look. So if you want to do your own analysis, then you don't have to have it tarred up and then extract it. And you'll see here with the, the dash I that most things are excluded. And here, the, we did not create a support config tarball. I'm going to go ahead and escalate my, elevate my privileges to root so we can go into this directory. And we're going to take a look at the crash.txt file. And it tells us information about how its crash is configured. And if we search for analyze VM core, you'll see here is where the first one's at. And both will be um, here. And you'll notice it gives information about it. This is um, some good information. Here, the log buffer is really good. This particular um, core dump was triggered by sysrq. So the crash command was sent to the sysrq trigger, which caused, forced the server to crash. So in this case, we'd have to wonder why. And that's a good thing to do if the server's hung and isn't crashing on its own, then maybe we need to force it to crash and get a core done. And echoing a dash, echoing a C, the letter C, to proc sysrq trigger would force the server to crash. And that's what was ha happened in this case. So that's what a support config looks like. And if you were to upload it, we would have all that information. Now, if we change to var crash, um, we would want to prepare one of these directories. Let's say it's the latest one, the, the 948 crash. We have been requested to upload that to our FTP server, the SUSE FTP server. Well, if you leave it in this, this format, um, it has some problems with the colon and, and some of those letters in there. So we're going to rename this directory first before we send it to SUSE. So we're going to rename the newest directory to VM core. And then we're going to include the case number, which you will have already. And then we will include um, the date of the crash. So now we have a little bit of a descriptive name. We could put an SR in front of that case number, but then we want to we want to include the entire directory. So we would tar up the entire directory, including the VM core. And you'll notice it also includes the analysis file, includes that readme.txt, and includes the dmessage output at the time of the crash, which could have some additional important information in it. Now that you've got the tarred compressed core file, you would want to upload that to the uh, SUSE FTP server. Go ahead and get out of that. And we will, that about wraps it up for analyzing a caption analysis file for a kernel core dump. And thank you for watching.